Thank you for this beautiful moment. And that scripture says that God makes things beautiful in its time. And we're going to hear from um, Laura Beth. Got something to release, and then we're going to probably fire tunnel you out for five o'clock. So we'll probably get you in the fire tunnel for about 25 to 5. Um, so we can be out by five. But it's the heart of God to, for everyone to be in this beautiful moment. And yes, we could have put the river out within the first five minutes. And yes, we could have got Mike up with his guitar and Joel and Cassie and Chantel out in the first ten minutes. And yes, I'm one of those people that would be there fully engaging. But that would not, that would not necessarily have been all of us. And what I've learned over the years is the fact that God loves the process. He loves the process. And I would have been in that river, and I would have been receiving. But would I have let all my defenses down? No. Would I have been soft? So soft that God could just pull out those weeds really easily? No. Would I have necessarily been a place where Jesus would say to me, Mark, what about this in your life? And I'll say, take it away. Get rid of it. Maybe not. So we have to almost to go through a garden clearance, backyard clearance, before God says, actually, now I can plant this here, this here, this here. And you can see how beautiful that is because the weed that was there is no longer there. And you can see the beauty of the small yellow petal that I've just planted in your life because nothing is hindering its place. Nothing is hiding it from your sight. You can see the treasures that God has been planting in your heart because he has done a backyard clearance on our hearts in the process leading up to this moment. We value the process. Holy Spirit knows what he is doing. For those that know me, I like to be there in five minutes. But I've learned the process. Well, Judith says yesterday. I've learned the process. Because I want it all. I want the full enchilada. I don't want a little bit. I've learned to press in for the all. And for some... For some, that involves a process. For me, that involves a process. And we know in Proverbs that it's the glory of kings and queens to find things out which God has hidden. He wants us to find those things, but there is a glory to it to find it. Have you received glory today? Yeah. And there's gold there. Yeah. Do you get that much? First time. It's the lady that got healed with the painful knees who just got gold on her hands for the first time. Thank you, God. So with the treasures that God has given us in Colossians 2, 2, and 3, where we are wrapped in the comfort of heaven. Wrapped in the comfort of heaven. And woven into God's love. That in Jesus, there are those treasures of revelation and knowledge that the people that we see tomorrow are crying out for. Friends, 
we are operating from a place of provision, not of lack. Sons operate from a place of provision. Orphans operate from a position of lack. So thank you for journeying in the process up to now. That we could all, all be in this beautiful moment. Where we don't have to try, we don't have to perform. We just receive and gaze upon the one whose gaze is transfixed on you with those fiery eyes of Jesus. Amen. Laura Beth, do you want Joel to continue or to stop or you want to continue? Yeah, yeah. I told Julia the piano lessons paid off and at some point Jesus kicked in, Joel, well done. <laughs> Yeah, the word of the Lord over yourselves. And um, there's a few layers to this, but I want to give this out over Saul. I want to give this out over speakers of life and what God is saying to the core leadership and what he's saying to those. Maybe you've never been to a Saul, a Saul um, gathering. I have a friend with me from Ireland today. This is her first time to come to uh, a speaker, speakers of life um, gathering. So maybe that's you too, but maybe you're... Uh, a, a part of the Saul family for a long time, but as there was, there's, I live in the very, very south of Ireland, so like I'm four hours south of Dublin, so it's, um, it was a 43-minute flight to get to Dublin yesterday, and then had a Newcastle flight to catch that was delayed three times, so you're sitting there in the airport, got in late, later than expected to Newcastle last night, but at one, because I love the Saul family, I would come regardless. But I knew that God was sending me with a word to declare out over yourselves. So, I mean, if your heart's not prepared, <laughs> if your heart's not prepared now, it should be. And so open yourself up to receive this decree out over your lives. Firstly, over the, the Saul family, the Saul leadership. I really felt like God was speaking about your 13th year. So you've entered into your 13th year as speakers of life. I'm right on that, correct, Natasha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so God just kept taking me back to the word graduation and was speaking about what it means to graduate and how significant this 13th year was. Now, I don't know about what life was like for you when you turned 13. I, I believe just about everybody in here has passed up 13 years of age. But when I turned 13, like all of a sudden I knew I, I'm not a girl any longer. Now I knew I wasn't in the completeness of what it means to be a woman, but I definitely knew I had left something. I definitely knew that the journey of leaving childhood had had started and I was stepping into something much different that I didn't understand at all. And I feel that there is a significance over speakers of life in that you have now left that stage of development, that stage of finding the working parts, how does this work, and yet the freedom is still there to explore and grow. But I dec decree out over you that there is a new wisdom in the strategy of what God is looking to do with this extremely special prophetic apostolic movement that started in the home of Juliet and Mark. Whatever began, God has so much more for it Speakers of life is such a safe place. Don't you always feel safe when you come on an online call? Don't you always feel safe when we gather? And like, you know, I kept assuring my friend who's from Ireland, I said, this is the safest place. I, I, I just, you know, I brought others from Ireland the last time. I, I, I always have a lot of joy in bringing people into a Saul event because it's so safe. 
but I want to release you beyond the place of the safe harbor and go into the place of where God is calling you to push in and go further and harder and stronger because God can trust you. God can trust you, Mark. God can trust you, Saul leadership team. He's able to, and so there's something that God is wanting to grow and stop. So I declare out over you, it's a graduation day, that you're leaving the season, the time, the years of what it was. I see things advancing for Saul in the area of digital technology, in being able, which Saul does a great job at that. I mean, they're exceptional. They are exceptional at that. But I see something going up to another level to be able I see your numbers, in, and we, we don't, like if only one shows up, it's me and Jesus and that one. I'll preach anywhere, anytime, any place. It's not about the numbers, except that God trusts you, so he's able to do the gathering. So on a, on a Friday night Saul call-ish, is it like usually about between 80 and 120-ish? Am I within that range? Yeah, because I keep seeing 240. And to be able to do 240, 250, to be able to bring those people in, and the, one of my very favorite things about the Saul family is it's the nations, it's the family of nations that come together. So I declare out over Saul that this is your graduation day to begin to uh, um, go into that place of adventuring into areas regarding technology that allow you to encompass more people coming into a safe harbor to be able to see those not only the the um, office of the prophet in that operation the prophetic gifting in operation the sages starting to emerge that we're going to see sage is not a bad word go to matthew jesus calls forth to release the sages we're going to begin to see this Saul is that place that you're graduating into something, that you're going into something. It's, it's a real time to push. It's a push time. And so I give that out over you, that you have left the, the, the develop, developmental years of years 1 through 12, and now in this 13th year, you're pushing into something much differently. And I see more books being written. I see more um, opportunity to go and do many Saul events, that it wouldn't be something that we're doing just every six months. I see more and more leadership teams popping up here and there, and I just see the beacons of light. Cut, and, and it's not about, and if you know Mark and Juliet, it's not about the Saul name. It's about releasing people into the fullness of their freedom to understand who their true identity is as a son. Amen? Over yourselves, what I really sensed when I came in was that there were those that were fully committed in their place as a son. There were some that were on the peripheral. Now, it feels much differently now, um, as it should, that everyone's starting to go, okay, maybe... I'm not so orphan-like. So I declare out over everyone who has been in that place of struggling with orphan, that's been struggling with that place of identity, I've been struggling with that place of not being accepted, possibly in your home church, possibly in your family, possibly in your own household, of being the strange, weird one who sees things and hears things and feels things. And I just release over you the, the place of identity of who God has truly knitted you to be, that you would leave here with that battle of the going back and forth, the place of toing and froing over that. I don't think that's the whole room, but there's a good handful of those who that's always your story. You come to something like this, you, you, you get filled up, but in a few days' time, that goes. And so what really I feel the, the leading of the Lord God on my heart is that you would come and have the experience of what we all have entered into in this time. But don't leave and let this be a moment that you had that wanes. I believe God is wanting to do something much more structural and foundational in you that you would leave with something. So there's a, there's a scripture that God kept bringing me to. I haven't been in this scripture. Came into the, uh, into the venue, into the church, and God kept taking me to Psalm 78. 
Because the other thing that I really feel is that there are those in the house that have estranged loved ones that um, you're either, you have people in your physical bloodline that are not serving God, or you've had, you have prodigals in your bloodline, or there's a hopelessness regarding families. And there's almost like, yeah, I just don't think it's going to happen in that particular person's life. And I felt that God was doing something regarding Saul being a voice in calling in a generation into the place of the metanoia, that the alignment of God for the children of, and, and I'm going to speak this out as uh, from Ireland um, uh, as a nation that it makes up the, 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 the British Isles, knowing that that is a geographical term, not a political term. And so I'm speaking right now really to the, um, the, the, the children that we want to see come in to, these are your children. The, the, these are English children, these are Scottish children, these are Welsh children, these are Irish children that we want to see come into this place that we would begin to walk in the trueness of what God is calling for the British Isles to step in and to be uh, um, not a something that is easily forgotten, that we have an experience with God, but we're not able to actually structure what God is looking to do in the earth and I don't speak this from a, a, a place of nationalism at all. I believe that God is asking us to step into that role as leaders in the family of nations of saying and showing what true kingdom living is as sons. So to do that, we need your children. We need your sons. We need your daughters to not be prodigals, but to come into the right place of what God is saying for your bloodlines. So I want you to start to get stirred in your spirit right now in that place of who's in my bloodline that I need to see them, that they would come into a place that, it, that rather than mocking you for coming to an event like this, they're driving you to an event like this, that there would be such a change of heart that I believe that there are those in here that you are going to take something away that in this place of being able to shift someone in your bloodline, that you would see there would be a drastic change. Let me read this scripture in Psalm 78, verse 1. Oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. One translation says from the ancient stories. That's what Mark was talking about when he was saying that Jesus allows us to come into this place. He tells us secrets. He gives us these incredible insights. And so when we hear this, we want to be able to receive it and do something with it. I want you to do something with this to take this away. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past, stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. We declare that out over the British Isles today, that these would be the nations that declare the glory of the Lord God, that your generation, that your children, that your brothers, that your sisters, however impossible it looks, we've all got somebody in our bloodline that we think, it would take a miracle. Yeah, those are the ones that we're calling forth. Who is that in your, in your bloodline? What niece is that? What nephew is that? Those are the ones that we're calling forth right now. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to our children so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. So you've got children that are not yet born. We're setting the landscape right now. We're shaping it, Holly Craigs. We're shaping it for a generation that hasn't taken breath. They've taken breath on the realms, but they haven't taken breath on, on this realm yet. And so right now, we're the ones. You're responsible for this. You're responsible for the shaping of what is taking place. You and I must take responsibility for what God is putting on our hearts. No longer can we say, that's the job of fivefold. No, it's the job of sons. 
No. It's the responsibility of sons acting like sons that I would do and say and be and breathe as my king asked me to do and say and breathe. If prophet is over my name, I don't care. It doesn't move me. What moves me is my identity as a son, the Galatians 4 piece. And so as a son, yes, I operate in the office of the prophet, but that is not as important to me. That's not my identity. My identity is, is as, as a son, that I would do and be and breathe, that I only go where he asked me to go, and this is where you're walking out. You're walking out, not today. I got a good prophetic experience. I had a word spoken out of me. Yes, I mean, those are from God. The, the, those, that, that's the bonus part. Here's the, here's the nugget. Here's the game changer. You walk out of here as a son today. You walk out of here in your true sonship. You walk out of here in the full rights of who God says you are. You are a daughter of the Most High God. You are a son of the King. And you do and you say and you be and you breathe as your king asks you to do. And sometimes that's a prophetic vision and sometimes that's using different language. And, and right now within prophetic circles, our language is very cumbersome. It's a bit all over the place because we're going into something we've never been at before. And isn't that exciting? Yeah, we've, we have left old wineskin and we have a new wine. It has a different taste in our mouths and we're not sure what to do with it. So this is where you take this piece and you go, okay, okay, I'm with you, Laura Bath. I will walk out of here. I'm going to take ownership. I'm going to take my position as a true son that I might have influence and be one who shapes the landscape for the children that are, have yet to be, have yet to come in my nation, in my neighborhood, in my bloodline. There's some surprise pregnancies that are um, connected to bloodlines in this room. There's gonna be some pregnancies of, you didn't think you were gonna have any more grandchildren, you're gonna have grandchildren. You didn't think you were gonna have any more children, you're gonna have some children. There are some, th there are those that must take breath on the earth. We have to see them come in. So I believe that we're going to be, begin to see loads and loads of births in the body of Christ. Let it be in the name of Jesus. Let's finish out just two more verses in Psalm 78, verse 7. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. Then they will not be like their ancestors. They will not be like their ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, and unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to God. Let us not look back and say, well, they got it wrong, or that particular denomination got it wrong, or that particular prophetic house. Don't stand in judgment, but in this time we stand before the one true God who has no rival, and in all of his majesty, we say, your sons are here. Your sons give you our yes. Yes to my king that I would do and say and be. So I call forth, if you've got a prodigal in your bloodline, just stand up. If you have a prodigal in your bloodline, stand up. If you have someone that is that you have prayed for their salvation, and it looks like they've ran the other way. Just stand up. As an act of faith, just raise your hands. I speak to your bloodlines in the name of Jesus. And by the power of the Lord God, who came in the womb of a woman who humbled himself, not for one man or one generation, but for all mankind. And I speak to those that you have stood in the gap for for those that you have prayed for for those that you have believed for and where their hearts have been stony and where the blinders have kept them from moving forward i say no in jesus name the assignments of tethers that have looked to hold back those that you know that you know god is saying now is their time now is their time now i press in with you right now and i say come into alignment bloodlines 
Call out your bloodline. Call out your bloodline, whatever your surname is. Call that bloodline into alignment. Come on, work with Jesus here. He's already done the hard bit. He's asking you to co-labor with him. He's asking you to participate with him in this process. He wants you to work with him. Call in that bloodline right now. Where there has been stiffness of neck, I break it in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Where bloodlines have partnered up with empire, I say no by the authority of the name of Jesus. As a daughter of the Most High God, empire is not kingdom, and I break the power of it in Jesus' name. Empire, be broken in the name of Jesus. Sonship, sonship, sonship. I call your bloodlines into the alignment of sonship in Jesus' name. He siko totokashi katatakashi. He siko totokashi. Ha si katatakashi. He siko totokosho. Ho so katatakashi. He siko totokashi. He siko totokashi. Right now, in the realms, I see slavery papers being ripped. Slavery papers that have been signed on this earth connected to your bloodlines. I see the ripping of documents that they are null and void. You are no longer tied as slaves. These are actual documents in heaven. I see them being ripped. Press into that. Work with God on this. I see the angels going in and ripping documents. Come on. Ho sokoto takashi. He si koto tokosho. Ha si kata takashi. He si koto tokosho. Ha si kata takashi. He si koto tokosho. Oh, we come in low before you, Lord God. We come in low. We humble ourselves. And we say, we have judged and been offended with our own bloodlines. And we have looked at them that they have lesser revelation. And therefore, we stand and have caused separation. And I see Jesus saying, will you do as I did? Will you go in and serve? Will you go in and have a meal with them? Wash their feet. Wash their feet. Wash their feet. I listened to a clip by Bill Johnson only day before yesterday, and it said, he said this that his father would say, when you wash a man's feet, you understand his journey. See, that bunion's there for a reason. That callus on the big toe, it's there for a reason when you wash a man's feet. But if you're not willing to get on your knees, to take that man's shoes off, to remove his socks and to begin to pour the water and wash his feet. You'll never know about what's the real root cause between, because of the brokenness that has prevented him from entering into the place of sonship. So here's the ask of the Lord God as you leave today. Will my sons leave this place as sons? And will you do as the son did, who came not to be served, but for 33 years in his earth life, he served. I release you in the awesome authority and power of Jesus himself into the place sons in servanthood who look to shape the landscape of their nation and their bloodlines through serving. And this is graduation day. Well done, Saul, well done. Amazing. Wow. Graduation day. Love it.